and rise again, wild ones. It's Bernadette. I'm here with your Pick a Card Daily Tarot Reading for Monday, December 21st, 2020. And I'm going a little bit slow today because, uh, y'all, I just really wanted this card to wait till after the first of the year for you. I did not want it to show up anytime around the holidays, but it does make really good sense that it shows up around the holidays for any variety of reasons. And so today I am, uh, through the wisdom of the animal allies and spirit, uh, I'm just going to ask you guys to pay a little bit of special attention today to this animal and to this card, maybe for yourself. It very well may be meant for you, but I guarantee you it is meant for people that you know, people that you don't know, and this is, uh, I know you guys take every opportunity to do good things for people, to pay it forward, random acts of kindness, you know, compassion. I, my wild ones, that's, I, I know you're like that. Um, but the holidays can be a very particularly uh, a tough time for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. And then there are those people that could care less about any kind of holiday. They don't get sucked into the emotion of it and all that. Um, and if you're <clears throat> you're one of those people, just please remember there are people that are not they're not <laughs> they're not those people. And so people like you that can buoy them up, that can inspire them, that can help heal them, can help help them move through this time maybe a little more smoothly. Um, please, I'm asking you to give it some consideration. So today's card is the Pangolin, which in the Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck is the Five of uh, Pentacles. Now, Pentacles are all about money. They're about coin, and you know, coin, <laughs> who doesn't love a good coin? But the fives in pentacles are, or the fives in tarot are about big transformations. And they do bring in the elements, you know, earth, air, fire, water, spirit. So you've got all this crazy spiritual stuff to deal with. But at the end of the day, the five of pentacles, um, based on the traditional Rider Waite tarot meanings, which is, it, those are the meanings and the symbolism that I use for my deck, the art. The bottom line is this card is the dark night of the soul. And for those of you walking a spiritual path, you're like, Ugh! you know, even if you don't know tarot, <clears throat> pardon me, you're just learning tarot, don't care about tarot, and just care about the, you know, the spirit totem and power animals. I've got to believe you heard dark night of the soul before. Now, what does that have to do with today? I'll tell you why. And what does it have to do with pangolin? I'll tell you why. So today the ruling chakra is the root chakra. That is the foundation of everything. Its color is deep red. And today's ruling planet is the moon, which is all about the emotions. So you've got this um, almost, a, almost a little bit of a juxtaposition going on where you've got things that are very deeply rooted and solid and you've got all the emotions going on which to me is always a call that says whatever emotions they've got going on, good, bad, or indifferent, they are mired in them, man. They've got their, they've got their foundations going. Pangolins are the most trafficked animals in the world, the most trafficked animals in the world. Their plight is, <clears throat> it is no joke. Some years ago, uh, the world woke up and went, oh my God, what? They get trafficked for what? And you guys will rarely hear me talk about trafficked animals, animal rescue stories. This is a place for love, for inspiration, for healing. I'm not unaware of those things. Believe me, I am. I just don't, I use, I go to different places to talk about that kind of thing or get involved in that kind of thing. What I wanted to present to the world, what the animals told me to present to the world was not part of that. Um, the idea is that understanding all of these deep, dark things will compel you to do more for the animal kingdom, including yourself, because you're part of the animal kingdom, right? And for other, other humans, other two-legged creatures, or the two-legged peoples. Um, I, I, I know it seems like I'm stumbling, and it, and it seems like this reading might be a little bit of a, like a downer, but it's really all about compassion and caring. And it, it, it's time to get a little serious about that today because of all of the other symbolism that's coming in and the time and the day and the, the, the part of the year, right? Okay. Um, we all know suicides go up at this time of year. Depression, anxiety goes up at this time of the year all across the board, no matter what people believe in. 
and that could be a lot of empaths. You know, I know tons of you, if not everybody watching this is an empath. And so you could be taking on or feeling the depression, the anxiety, the whatever from the outside world and bringing it into your own sphere. That's something you don't want to do. Now, <clears throat> the reason that I bring up pangolin is, um, you know, not really wanting to talk about it being the most trafficked. I, I think of runaway emotions. I think of depression, of anxiety, suicidal thoughts, um, you know, just all of that deep darkness. I, I think of that as a trafficked emotion. I always have. I just didn't know the word for it until I understood what trafficked meant. And here's what I mean by that. The core of you, the core of someone else that is your soul, that is perfect. And it resides in perfect love and perfect harmony and perfect peace. It is the pinnacle. It's the ascension. Your spirit is what inhabits this body. So this body and this 3D reality that we live in is trafficking you. It's trafficking your thoughts. It's trafficking your, trafficking your emotions. All of the advertisements we see, all of the, you know, the, the, the things that we're fed from when we're kids, make no mistake. They're not just, those people aren't spending good jillions of dollars on their marketing messages, you guys. They have an entire team of scientists, behavioral scientists behind everything that they do, all the way from politics. And please do not discuss politics on my channel. That is an immediate ban. Don't even do it and say joking. Don't do it and say, I know you don't want to talk about this because it is banned. But all the way from the highest people that run the country, all the way down to, you know, mom and pop businesses that are trying to get their business ahead, they study human behavior. And those ads are deliberately designed to make you think you want it, need it, whatever. What all of this has to do is, can you see the correlation because of being trafficked, because pangolins, the only reason they're trafficked <clears throat> is there are parts of the world that believe that their scales and other parts of their body have medicinal or magic properties and powers. Okay. I understand why you might have thought that once upon a time, but these days, the keratin in their scales, which is what they're primarily after, which is which is what grows our hair and our nails, right? It, there are no healing properties in that. Science has proven that time and again. Now, the magical properties may work for you because if you believe it and it makes you better or makes you feel healed or whatever, okay, then it was true, but it had nothing to do with the pangolin and its scales and its body parts. It had everything to do with your belief system. Again, this is a very different reading. I know it is in a place that we don't normally go to with the wild ones, but I, and I probably, I don't know, the, the, the animal allies probably wouldn't have been telling me to take this tack if it were not for the time of year that it is and how this whole thing correlates into this time of year. Whether you yourself are dealing with these things or you know people that are, or maybe you just want to volunteer someplace where people, you know, hotlines, helplines, shelters, whatever, where they're dealing with that kind of stuff, right? Okay, so <clears throat> one of the things that is really important at this time of year uh, on, the, on the, you know, the five of pentacles is that you do get through to the other side. You, you do. And it's very much like the tower. You go through this dark period, but when you're on the other side, you see things so much more clearly and they're brighter and they're better very much like when humanity stepped in and pretty much saved pangolins almost overnight because their plight was, you know, it was put out in the news. It was highly covered. That coverage leads me to the, the news coverage, the stories, the social media, that leads me to the coverage that they have on their bodies. Their scales act like literal scales. It's a shield of armor. And while they're little bitty things comparatively, um, you know, they do the best they can by putting up their shields and putting up their armor. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was listening to what I was being told. I don't think that has anything to do with you who's watching this. I think it has to do with you helping someone who's got their shield deflectors up and you, you can't get in. It's, it's, it, it's like constantly asking somebody, how can I help you? How can I help you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And they might be good. You know, let's say somebody is moving. Okay. They might be able to pack up their whole truck. 
Of course they're good. Of course they're fine. But why are their shields up? Why won't they accept that help? Why won't they accept that form of love? This message today is for you to work with a pangolin-esque person who has their shields up, has their armor on, won't let anybody in. You'll be able to find that way in. And gosh, thank you for doing that. It's going to go really well for them and really, really well for you. Now, when pangolins feel like they're threatened, they curl up in a fetal position. So I always think of pangolin, uh, and I have to tell you, in all these readings I've ever done, the, the fives rarely show up for me, and the five of pentacles almost never shows up for me. I mean, maybe two or three times a year, maybe. So it's a pretty, for me as a reader, for me as a shamanic practitioner, it's a pretty big card to show up. So when I think about that curling up in the fetal position, I think about, well, if we go really deep, because just just very briefly to take a look at the um, the traditional meanings, of the Rider Waite uh, card, the, the Five of Pentacles tarot card, it's it's about impoverishment and sickness and isolation, and maybe what you're experiencing is real, but maybe it's about being perceived. It's it's this card is about opening up your eyes and seeing the truth, and correlating that to the fetal position of the pangolin. What triggers are taking you back to immature or childlike? beliefs, perceptions, actions, reactions, and, and take a look. Do you need to unfurl from that fetal position? Are you really under attack? And who are you under attack by? Yourself? Someone else? Uh, what's really going on here? And how does it harken back again to times when you were younger? Sometimes it's safe to come out of the water. Sometimes it's not so safe. Sometimes it's safe to come in the water. But you know, but not. It's uh, your idea of the perfect world, uh, which is, again, the, the night of, uh, or not the night, but the five of pentacles, it's all about it. Now, I dream of a perfect world, whatever Bernadette's perfect is, I dream of that, and I do believe one day it will exist. I also believe that I am not smart enough, mature enough, or wise enough to understand what a, real per a, a, a really perfect world is. Here's why. <laughs> Ten years from now, I'm going to think a perfect world is something different than I think of what it is today, hopefully. Because that's the other part about pangolin. These people that around the world that think they're going to get some kind of medicinal something, something out of a pangolin, then you can't tell them anything. You can't educate them. You can't get them to see the light. You can't get them, you can't get them to do it. So you have to go about saving the pangolin in different ways. This may be where you're at. Maybe you've got a deeply... I'm going to tell you this story. I've got to tell you this story. So I had a person that worked with me once upon a time, and her daughter had, uh, my God, this kid had probably had 20 heart surgeries by the time she was 14. And uh, they were on, constantly on alert for if this kid's heart was just going to give out. I mean, it's, it's a real possibility. So one day, this old gal, she was, I, man, it's, I, she's in my top three for uh, uh, people I've ever seen for how upset they were. She was uh, manic. So I got her calm, glad well, I didn't get her calmed down. I, I helped and we got her calmed down and I was like, what is going on? Well, her husband, near do well that he was, or probably still is, had not paid their health insurance. And through the job that he worked at where they got their health insurance to take care of their child's heart, he simply had forgot. He forgot. She wasn't as upset at that as she and she wasn't as upset about what that could mean for their child she was upset because she deliberately did not remind him to prove the point to him of what a bad father he is i i couldn't wrap my head around that because regardless of a sh what a schmuck he is you, you need to prove a point so badly, you need to prove a point so badly, you're willing to put your own child's life at risk? That right there, that's, that, that's something, I don't know if she ever let go of that, because our, I, mm -mm. <laughs> so 
this card is no joke about deeply ingrained beliefs, deeply ingrained, it ain't true kinds of things that that may not be inside of you or they may, or they may be inside of somebody that you're being called to help. Again, this is a reading that is, you know, maybe not as happy, happy, joy, joy, except for this. The result of this will be happy, happy, joy, joy, if you're willing to do the work, if you're willing to take a look at, you know, what else is going on here. Now, in the, in the Five of Pentacles card, you, t you take a look at the man and woman, and they're only wearing blue, green, and brown, the colors of the earth and water. That's the material and emotional worlds only. They are completely involved in their own soap opera. They feel poor. They are lonely because they're fault finders and they're focused on their wants instead of their needs or what they actually have. And if you take a look at the stained glass window, it's kind of a vision of how you think things should be. In the world of should be, everything is beautiful and right. But how do you, like, how do you know? Like, how do you, what if you get to that right world? What if you only got one shot and you only got one wish? And you got there and went, dang, I didn't think of this. Dang, I didn't think of that. Well, okay. That's why the window in the Five of Pentacles tarot card has only the upper half of the Kabbalistic tree of life. And the man and woman that are passing, they're, 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 they're being beckoned by this warm golden glow coming from inside the church, but they don't want to see it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to just turn their head and even slight, slightly, slightly glance in the direction that could take them to a better life, to a better frame of mind, to a better emotional place, to a better everything. Because it's your spiritual self. When you are boo-hoo, wham, wham, in this deep of a place, let me tell you something. Depression, anxiety, loneliness, they are real things. I'm not making light of them at all. They are real, and my heart bleeds for those people. And my heart also knows that... They can get out of it anytime they want. It's about perspective. It's about seeing things the way you want them to be. That's it. It, it. It's not about being married to those things that are not supporting you spiritually. It, it's not about that. It, it, it's about that, that like that, bing, 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 like I'm genie, right? That could change today as long as you want it, as long as you'll allow it, as long as you'll will it, right? These poor folks, it's black midnight, there's a raging snowstorm. They've literally, in their minds, been left out in the cold. Now, I can speak to that. I, uh, I'm a quirky person, and consequently, growing up in a small southern school where my mother and grandmother did not discourage me from being who I was, they encouraged me to be who I was because they had a broader perspective. They had a higher wisdom, and they knew that I was going to shoot out of Donnell in Florida, where I went to elementary, middle, and high school, dang, 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 my enduring love of plaid comes from all, comes from all the, the cowboy farmer flannel shirts I grew up around and watching Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and falling in love with every one of them, um, you know, and Bonanza, I wanted to marry Haas, I didn't care nothing about little Joe, but Haas, he was the man for me, but anyway, um, man, I used to look around and think, why can't I? Why isn't it me? Why can't I be thin? Why can't I, you know, why can't my family have money so I can afford nice clothes like the other girls? Why can't I have a boyfriend? Why can't I? Why is it always me? Why? Oh my gosh, I was, I didn't know any better. But as I got older, I got so sick of myself, I couldn't even stand me. I couldn't stand me. I had to, I, it took me a long time to change because I didn't understand. I didn't understand. But once I understood, I was like, oh, we're done with that. And it was gone overnight. We're not having any more of that, right? But when you, but my spiritual, my spiritual evolution came along with that. They didn't come separately. They kind of came part and parcel. So if you know somebody like that, maybe you're contending with something like that. I literally felt left out in the cold. And to make matters worse, these poor people, oh my God. You know, they're slowed down by the crutches and their bare feet. It doesn't have to be like that because remember, it's a crutch. 
take a look at this card. They are literal crutches. Why, why, why do we need those crutches? I don't know. For you, it's going to be one way. For another person, it's going to be another reason. But you don't need that crutch anymore. Or the person that you are being asked to check in on this holiday season doesn't need that crutch anymore. Now, moving on to uh, Pangolin, just to get a little more in about Pangolin. They have terrible eyesight. <laughs> So Pangolin is not necessarily going to be a great helpmate when you need to see something with these eyes. But when, when an animal of any kind doesn't have great eyesight or any sense, the other senses get sharper. Or at least it seems that way that they get sharper. So your eyesight here, your eyesight here, your eyesight here at your crown chakra, that's going to be on an, up, on an upswing. And Pangolin really asks you to step into that and in some ways see the things through the eyes of not a child, but of a baby. Maybe a rebirth of some kind. So you go into that fetal position symbolically and you come out of that, you just unfurl symbolically and you trust that everything around you is full of hope and it's full of all the things that you need and all of the things that you currently want you still have your protection or this person that you're going to be, I, y'all, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is about y'all. I'm not saying that you won't have some of these things that will be, that will be relevant to you, that will pertain to you, but I just, oh, I feel it so strongly in my heart. This is about you doing something with somebody else or even a group of people who are like this, who have these tendencies. Um, and you're going to be able to, to Give them like some great healing and great hope and just great energy to avoid the negative and see things in a different light and just literally come out of that dark night into the glory of the light that's coming in from that church. And it's not about a church. It's not about the R word, right? We don't say the R word around here. Um, but faith and spirituality. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to have a big something to do with it. Oh my gosh, y'all, this may not be a for this Christmas season thing. I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps everywhere. Everything inside. If my hair stands up even more than it normally does, I, I, I'm a, I have electrified myself. I have downloaded this. Y'all, this may be the call for you to be a a, 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 a metaphysician, to be a minister, to be a pastor, to be a holy person, a shaman, a somebody that is the one that has the facility, maybe even the brick and mortar presence, or even online, you know, you can have an ashram online these days, that you are that spiritual leader, you are the, um, wow, and that, that unfurling, that coming out of the fetal position You've had your time to gestate, to consider, to be, um, to go through the gestation period. And when you unfurl, you'll be a spiritual leader in whatever capacity you want to be a spiritual leader in. Y'all, I, there we go. Thus ends the sermon of the day, right? Okay. Um, and in case y'all wonder, I go to church every now and again, because I go for the music. <laughs> I pretend particularly love to go to churches that sing gospel. So I'll be, I'll be one of the, one of the few, you know, white faces in that church somewhere. Although I love that churches are getting a lot more diverse. And Hey, have you guys seen that voices of fire? Oh my gosh. You've got to see voices of fire. It's on Netflix. Um, cause I'm happy, happy Pharrell. He, it's him and his uncle. Um, apparently that whole family's been in the church line and music. It's fascinating. And the voices you'll hear on there, They'll blow your dang hair back, y'all. So anyway, um, so I love going to church because I love the music, in particular gospel churches, uh, gospel music churches. And um, I, I feel like in whatever way that golden glow that's going to come, that's going to be uh, part of this message for you. If you've been thinking about being a spiritual leader of whatever kind, it's time for you to emit that golden glow. So... Pangolin reminds us that comfort is always nearby. The Five of Pentacles reminds us that comfort, salvation, saving of ourselves and other people, it's right there. 
it's right there. See how I'm like moving around, but I'm like looking at you. I'm not even looking at, hello, here I am. Because people have the ability to do that. But now I'm going to look and I'm going to take that hand that's extended to me, or I'm going to be the one that keeps going, hello, 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 until somebody looks at you and they take your hand. Okay? I know it's okay. Y'all, there is a freedom when people release themselves from those kinds of bonds, they won't remember exactly what you said, but they'll remember how it made them feel. And it re they'll remember, they'll remember that thud. And that thud is the bonds of their own heavy, heavy, emotional, messed up perception, negative chains just going wham right on the floor. Good for you. I thank you in advance for the sacred work that you're going to be doing. Maybe that you already do. Maybe maybe the, the work needs to come into you. You're the one that needs to drop those chains, or you're going to be helping other people drop their chains. In any event, there is no better way to set freedom than start from a place of, and I'm not even going to do this, stay wild because it doesn't call for it right now. It calls for the what the what staying wild really means at its core. Stay wild, help people get rid of their bonds, unnecessary bonds. And thank you for listening. Thank you for being willing to do the deep, committed, hard stuff. I love you all very much. And I'll see you tomorrow.